Hey everyone and welcome back to another Warcraft video. So, another patch has dropped and as always that means there are a number of surprise changes. Either ones surprise. found in the patch notes that we did like not a storm expect out. or undocumented ones which appeared out of the blue on patch day. This time there actually has been a rather massive change to what in many ways has been the core of Battle of Azeroth, so... Oh no. Let's go. Took the video. We'll start with that, the artifact power situation. And first off, artifact knowledge. So upon logging in, players found that the AP requirements were surprisingly low based off what we had expected from the PTR. And as it turns out, Blizzard have advanced artifact knowledge by an additional four weeks on live servers. Wait, what? That's something that will massively cut down on the amount of AP farming what needed to What the fuck? Wow. Up. As Wowhead points out, you now dark, only so need 158k artifact power to unlock your first minor slot down from 453k okay. on the PTR. That's a hell of a lot less artifact power, and that's something that will be an absolute okay. godsend to the top end players, though not quite the bleeding edge players. I'm still pretty sure that Metha and Co. will be going as hard as they can to get just a little bit further ahead, even if that only means getting another 3% stamina node on the heart. It's about it right. It still is worth noting that the knock on effects that this will have on the rest of the patch really are Green Giant, thanks for five subs, man. I appreciate this that. This is a bit of a sign the Blizzard are copying you, onto things, especially when you take into account these following changes. So, Blizzard have massively increased artifact power rewards for many types of content in the game. So, Siege of Boralus, Temple of Sethralis, Motherlode, Tuldgore, and Waycrest Manor have had their AP reward be increased by 30%, while- Well, that's great, because these things take fucking forever. You know the funny thing about this? Is it literally this was the exact same problem that happened back in Legion with Maw of Souls and Arcway awarding the same AP and everybody wanted to do Maw of Souls. So Blizzard is literally doing the exact same thing wrong that they did in Legion and now they're fixing it like six months after the fact. It's like why wouldn't you, I mean come on. King's Rest and Shrine of Storms have been increased by 60%. That's not all though, as the Mythic plus 10 bonuses have been changed. So your End of Run chest from Ataldazar, Freehold, and Underrot is now a base of 280 AP, down from 290, while Siege, Temple, Motherlode, Tuldgore, and Waycrest will give you 360, up what from 290, the fuck? and King's Rest and Shrine of Storms will give you 440. And what's actually better is that for every level above 10 the Keystone, you get an extra 30 AP, up from 10, which does make them a fair bit more lucrative. That's not all though. The weekly Mythic Keystone chest box now gives you a baseline 3,800 AP okay. and then a bonus of 75 per level up from 50. So what does this mean overall? Well, dungeons are still not an incredible amount of AP if you continue There are waste them, of time. But they certainly are looking like, a good there are waste better. of time. And it is the case that if you do your weekly Mythic Plus 10 push, that's pretty darn lucrative. For an example, a plus 12 King's Rest, that's like 440 plus 60, so 500 from the chest, then a plus 12 on your weekly will give you 3,800 for the chest baseline, plus another okay. 900, so that's 4,700 from the chest, plus 500-ish from the run. That's pretty strong for doing one dungeon if you're, you know, uh, up to par in that. 5,000? Oh, actually, yeah, that's a pretty good amount. Because killing okay. a raid boss is now far more lucrative. You'll get 900 from defeating a current tier raid boss, up from 450. Oh, th this is actually good. Like, straight up, this is actually a good change. Thank fucking God they're making raid bosses lucrative for AP. Like, little Ant, thank you for the five gifted community subs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, this is what they've needed to do for the longest time. And I, I don't know why this has taken them so long. This is the, again, the same problem. They are literally repeating the exact same mistakes that they made in Legion again. They did this in Legion too. They have then also changed old tier raid bosses to award 450. Now, I doubt that that will become a common way to farm AP, but it certainly is nice to see that older content continue to still, you know, have relevance, I suppose. That's something I always do like to see. Now, moving on to islands, we've also seen a lot there. Heroics now give you 300 up from okay. 225, while Mythics and PvP are now 450 up from 350, with the weekly then being 3,500. Mythics should be 1,000. Or sorry, PvP should be a thousand. 
Like, that would actually get people to do PvP islands. Like, the thing is that, like, nobody is going to intentionally... Like, if you do a mythic island... Like, here's the thing, is that doing a mythic island, the chance of winning is basically guaranteed. Like, if you lose an island... Like, I mean, how bad do you have to be at the game to actually lose an island? I, I don't even know. Uh, but if you actually have uh, the PvP, there is a lose scenario. And because there's a lose scenario, a lot of people aren't going to do it. So if the rewards are the same, it's not going to be worth it. Uh, thank you very much, man. I appreciate the uh, the bits, man. Thank you very much, uh, Winter Knight. Okay, thank you, thank you. For the Alliance, you're goddamn right. Okay. Up from 2,500. So combine that with the treasure quest being still very powerful, and uh, the islands are now even stronger in terms of getting AP. Plus, of course, they also good. doubled the AP that you get from um, emissaries. And then on the topic of doubling, well, AP from PvP has been doubled. Yes, doubled. Your first win of the day is 100% more, and then 2v2 wins are a baseline of 240 each, while 3v3s are 300 each. Wow. Unrated BGs are 300, epic BGs are 600, and rated BGs are 1,050, with against overwhelming odds being wow. 2,000 up from 1,000. PvP really didn't give you enough AP, in my view, in the yeah, past. Yeah, it didn't so at all. So this change, I think, does go a long way to improving this is great. that situation. So what does this overall mean? Well, uh, it's actually things. a good thing. First, I think it's a tacit admission that artifact power is just going to be serving a smaller role in this patch. I guess it feels a little bit like AP did in 7.3, where you kind of had to put a little bit of effort in to like meet the minimum requirement of the system. But well, no. you only did that for the Nether White Crucible. After that, nobody gave a fuck. I'll be right back. I can take a piss an awful lot of time. Design-wise, it looks to me as if Blizzard were not particularly happy with players having to seek out AP from sources like other than what they wanted to do in the game. I think having AP be the primary motivator for doing something like a world quest or an island, well, I think that was an abject failure so far in BFA. Yes, it was. I think it drove a lot of negative sentiment. Blizzard seem to understand that now. I think there's a fine line between a task and a chore. Players are much happier when they're working towards goals that they've set for themselves instead of I don't like AP. I don't like the way that artifact knowledge works. I don't think they should have artifact knowledge. Artifact knowledge creates this thing where all of the work that you put in is ultimately futile because you know that in just a couple of weeks, you would have been able to do the same thing that you're trying to do now, like twice as fast. And it just creates this like weird thing where it's like, why am I even doing anything? I, I, I really don't like the way that works. Out of arbitrary ones and... Uh you know, especially ones that kind of have them push towards content that they want no part of. And with this patch, I think Catch we up see mechanics a all over lot again? of yeah, that reflected in the design, which is a good thing. What works out much better for players is if they just earn AP for the existing things that they're doing. So the correct move is what we see here, to bolster the rewards for content that people are already doing, instead of sort of pigeonholing them into a smaller amount of content. So overall, great changes from Blaze. I really like what they've done, and let's good. keep on moving, yeah, because good. we've got Transmog to talk about. This was an important one for many. All okay, all right, here we go. Legs can now be hidden. There are actually already some posts on Reddit of people making really good use of this. I saw a particular one which was um, a transmog of the vanilla cover art Demon Hunter, which is like the topless and elf. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, sure. Really, that's it's cool. a significant relaxation on what they've had before. And I think it's a good step that they're moving to allow more player freedom there, even though. It Wait, players can make all slots hidden e except legs. Let's keep it classy. Wow. I didn't I thought it was just your chess piece. I didn't know it was everything. Holy shit. It may result in a few rather unseemly Damn. mogs potentially harming the overall flavor of the world. Their harder stances do seem to be, well, eroded by player feedback. Perhaps Blizzard right. have realized that they kind of get it wrong sometimes. And I think with these mog rules, we're really seeing things that are pretty good. Relaxing their restrictions has also resulted in Cookie's Tenderizer, Dire Brew's Shanker, and Nat Peggle's Hat being transmogable as well, which is certainly what? good. Now, moving on, there are some more really? interesting miscellaneous things. Oh, like shit. For 21 by 9 loading That's screens, good. which as a 21 by 9 monitor user, I'm pretty happy about. Great. And uh, then your friends list actually taking your BNET favorites into account. There is one thing that I'm kind of surprised that seems to have just flown under the radar, and that is that there's a new altitude system for audio so when you fly above the ground ambient sound will now change to accommodate your new height so um that's pretty cool it just used fuck? to not care about altitude whatsoever in the past so a pretty nice change yeah i guess Their that's cool this patch sure. really just seems to have been like hey sorry there's a bunch of stuff we should have done a long time ago let's do it so further to that 
Hellfire Assault, the first boss of Hellfire Citadel, has been made a bit more reasonable to solo, with the damage that the NPCs do to the cannons being dropped, and the number of munitions needed to pass the encounter going down to five. In addition to that, and wow, wow. they really needed to do this, That's good. have been added back to the spell book. BFA I'm sure that most say. players, especially returning players and people Here using we ghosts, go. were spending a good amount of time wondering why some of their buttons just randomly started going, or why the cooldowns were just reduced or reset sometimes. In truth, there are some specs that are kind of complex and arcane in a way, uh, just, you know, not intuitive, right? Um, we yeah. don't have those passive tooltips being there to, to explain. And this was down to Blizz's attempt to simplify the appearance of the game by baking passives into abilities and then hiding some, but this ended up leading to just information just not being clear and present. So As usual. now it's all visible in your spell book, and that is so much better, so much more readable. You know, if someone's character randomly starts glowing, you can actually just look in your spellbook and find out why. Now, in addition to the rather That's long good. patch notes, there were a number of changes in this patch that went undocumented. So, oh, here we go. To the r slash wow community. I prefer to call them illegal changes. and sharing these. So, first of all, the reported 415 weapon from Najatar is not 415 and live. It's actually 370. So, it's no longer a free bit of almost raid <sighs> gear, but it still is helpful for anyone who's not played in a while. There are... The three, uh, 415 was too high, 370 was too low. They should just make it 400. That, that's what would make sense to me. Also Why three? Who uses 370s? Changes, including a nice update to it's so bad. Fire particles, a fix to the High Mountain Torrens face mash for females, a long-awaited fix to the clipping Nightborn Heritage Belt. Really that's took good. them a while on that one, didn't it? And then some new dances. So specifically, the Zandalari Trolls have dances for Moonkin and Travel Form, and the Shaman Ghost Raptor uses the Zandalari Travel Form dance now as well. Then Moonkins, who use the Glyph of the Stars, are treated to a new, more fitting sound effect when they shapeshift. Mages have also had their refreshment table be updated to be a little bit more fitting for 2019. So, let's move on to some more quality of life changes. We have some long-needed things like subtitles scaling with screen resolution, which is pretty good. That's and then good, yeah, sure. To That's great. We've got some upgrades as well. The loot limit has been raised. Now, Wait, what? Not too many people would normally run into this issue, but what? when group looting was introduced, it was limited to 25 NPCs at a time. Well, as of this patch, that's now up to 50. And I'm pretty darn sure that the hardcore farmers who are going there clearing Oh, the AOE and, looting. You know, for like, say, raw gold farming, I'm sure okay. they be happy to hear about that. That's great. And of course, there is the Caverns of I Time guess. Portal being added to the new portal room. Two less so clicks. Farming old content is a bit less time consuming now. There that's was also great. a change to the Island Expedition items, so the Seafarer's Doubloon uh, consumables that gave buffs have been rotated to a new batch. The ones that have been removed from sale have actually okay. been added back into the islands themselves Good. where that's they great picked up and used uh, we do then have a change that reduces quality also, of life thanks for tier two sub man Thank was you. probably a bit of an unintended game mechanic so it's kind of reasonable and that is that the underlight angler's move speed bonus now no longer remains active in combat and you know what i think that one's actually kind of fair there yeah, it's, it's are also broken some if it performance was. improvements that have been reported, which I've, I've seen. That sometimes is par for the course with patches, although this time it seems to have been fairly major for certain configs. I've seen reports of up to 20 FPS higher in ultra settings. But on that note, all of the changes okay. are better, though, because it seems like we're missing the lighting quality option. There's now just one default thing that's on forever, which is going to suck for people who want precise control over their visual settings or for people on configs where the sort of higher lighting settings were pretty punishing. Then, in addition, we've also lost the ability to overwrite and replace sound files manually in the game files. Of course, as a hunter, back in the day, that's something we would do. We'd use a silenced shot um, for, you know, the, the weapons which were I don't even remember that, then. dude. You I know, didn't even know you could do that. I had no idea. And it's one that is being looked at by Blizz, so there could be a fix there. And then there's one really peculiar change that, uh, well, was pretty odd. So the close all windows API function is now locked during combat and can't be used. Um, I'm not sure how many people have used that. I'm pretty sure it's... Yeah, nobody gives a shit about change. that. Um, I can't really think why... It I mean, I guess it's good, but still. Like that. So that's a little bit bizarre and I suppose inconvenient for some add-on authors. So there you go. Overall, this patch is promising for a variety of reasons. A lot of little things are finally being fixed and a bunch of the systematic changes are pushing the game in a better direction. It's not like the game is significantly better, but if we look at the logic and the decision-making involved in some of these changes, we can definitely see that the live team is learning from their mistakes and moving in a more favorable direction. So... Are they kind of learning from their mistakes? Yes, but they're learning from their mistakes too slow. Like, that's the problem. Is like, yes, they are improving. This is the same thing that happened with Legion, is that Legion was really good at the end, and it was really kind of shitty at the beginning. 
uh, it, it just it takes too long for them to make changes. Hopefully, that's something that continues into the future. I sure hope 8.3 saves it's BFA. Time to enjoy the patch. So I'd like to know, is there anything that you would like to see fixed in the game? Are there any small issues that you think Blizzard ought to be aware of? Do, um, you know, leave them down in the comments. The more visible they are, the more that, you know, they could appear in maybe the next version of this guide for um, patch 7.2.5 or 8.2.5. But anyway, with that said, thank you very much for watching, and with that, I'll see yep. you next time.